Good morning, dear colleagues. I'm here to uh, introduce uh, uh, the power of minimal invasive uh, uh, surgery and to try to explain why we have to uh, start a surgical program of minimal invasive valve surgery. Uh, today we will be mostly concentrated on mitral valve surgery. I don't have any disclosure for this presentation. And uh, uh, if we look to the uh, mostly performed surgical procedure, which is uh, a full median sternotomy, we can say that this is the most common approach for uh, all type or most type of surgical procedure. It gives to the surgeon an excellent and wide exposure. Uh, cardiopulmonary bypass is established through a central cannulation, either arterial nor venous. Uh, we can obtain a good conventional myocardial protection it's surely a fast procedure and uh, it gives a direct access to the heart and we can manage uh, the uh, possible complication when they occur. The patients are surely asking for something which is less invasive. They prefer a more cosmetic but a less traumatic procedure. And uh, if we see uh, the uh, German heart surgery report, which represents the European trend, we see that there is surely a trend in increasing the numbers of mitral repairs versus the valve replacement with a prosthesis. And there is also, looking to the uh, past, a tendency to increase the numbers of minimal invasive approaches. We see that in 2015, uh, the uh, numbers of a minimal invasive were quite uh, uh, around 50%. So most of the centers are starting a program of uh, minimal invasive. Uh, but uh, we can see that we have centers who are able to do quite all the procedure, more than 90%, and centers who are doing less than 5% of uh, a minimal invasive uh, uh, surgical approach. But why there is this uh, a uh, slow tendency to adopt minimal invasive. Surely we require a learning curve, we require uh, training programs for surgeons, and uh, even in some centers we have that the case volume to perform this procedure is too low to justify a new technique. And uh, uh, most of the centers want and even need to keep their patient in their own clinic without transferring them to centers of excellence where the expertise in minimal invasive is higher. So it's a patient that is moving and looking for centers who are doing minimal invasive. Indeed, there is a, a criticism related to the potential risk of complication, to the higher skill required due to higher technical difficulties. There is a concern about a longer duration of the surgical procedure with a less percentage of possible valves that has uh, that can be repaired, that obviously cosmesis is not a real clinical benefit and that to perform this procedure we need a retrograde perfusion, 
especially when we uh, do the procedure with a totally endoscopic uh, uh, approach. And all this point brings some uh, uh, concerns about the cost and benefits value. But let us find uh, uh, the reason why this uh, is not really the truth. So why to start a minimal invasive program? We know that uh, from even other uh, surgical practice like general surgery, uh, minimal invasive reduces surgical dissection with a lower blood loss and less transfusion, reduces post-operative pain and distress, uh, improving uh, the mobilization with a shor shorter hospital stay, with a rapid recovery uh, from uh, respiratory dependency and uh, better respiratory function. We have uh, uh, that the patient uh, has a rapid recovery, less rehabilitation, with uh, a quick uh, back to work capacity. We have a superior cosmetical uh, which is a benefit, especially for ladies, young ladies. Uh, if we need to reoperate a patient, it's easier to re-enter in the chest. All these points bring to a lower cost of not only the procedure, but all the process for that procedure. And uh, this is uh, obtaining uh, the same medium and long-term outcome uh, of uh, uh, the valve surgical procedure. But uh, uh, actually the most data of these possible benefits of uh, uh, minimal invasive are not brought by uh, randomized studies but but uh, with uh, a, a review meta-analysis from different papers published in the past years. So here we see the largest meta-analysis which reports 46 studies with more than 20,400 patients uh, enrolled in the evaluation. And we can see the baseline characteristic of the patients in terms of age, sex, ventricular function, body mass index, and uh, other comorbidities. And we see that uh, uh, these are not more different from uh, uh, conventional surgery. But let's see which are the strong points of this meta-analysis. And is that uh, surely uh, the conventional surgery uh, is uh, uh, shorter. We see that uh, there is a difference uh, of about 20 minutes of all the duration of surgery. Cardiopulmonary bypass time is uh, also shorter and even the cross clamping time for performing the uh, mitral uh, procedure, mostly mitral repair. So these are all statistical significant aspects. But uh, let's look which are the benefits of uh, minimal invasive. Uh, the bleeding is less. The blood transfusion requirement is uh, less. The uh, need for retoracotomy due to postoperative bleeding is uh, uh, not significant, but there is a tendency to be better. Uh, the risk of stroke is not different. So uh, there is no additional risk in terms of stroke and uh, bleeding. The length of stay is shorter. The hospitalization duration is shorter, uh, two days less. Pain is uh, less. 
and mortality. Let look at uh, the important uh, outcome like survival after procedure. The mortality is the double in the sternotomy group of patient and is uh, uh, two times less in the minimal invasive group of patients. Uh, mortality up to 30 days is uh, 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 less uh, and non-significant. Uh, uh, the long-term survival, this is a study which shows us uh, that uh, over 1,000 minimal invasive mitral operation, the early, late outcomes and the echocardiographic follow-up shows that uh, there is uh, an improved uh, benefit uh, of uh, uh, minimal invasive. The repair rate is even better in the minimal invasive group of patients. This is probably due to the fact that there is a bias, seeing that the musculate surgeons probably are the ones who were uh, enrolling patients in this uh, meta-analysis. And if we look at this statement, consensus statement published in 2010, we see that the short and long-term mortality is comparable, that in hospital mortality, in hospital complication, morbidity are comparable, there are reduced infection, transfusion, post-operative atrial fibrillation, duration of ventilation, ICU, and hospital length of stay. These are reduced. So uh, this uh, uh, means also reducing the cost related to the short hospital stay and the lower incidence of complication. Uh, so we can save costs and we can see here that uh, uh, these are uh, less in the uh, minimal invasive uh, uh, group of uh, patients. Uh, and not only one, but more uh, publication report uh, to this uh, aspect. We can teach minimal invasive. We can even apply it as a institutional uh, philosophy, and this can enhance the quality control in a department, uh, seeing that uh, if we really evaluate the uh, power of different surgeons, we see that uh, we can easily extend this technique to more than one, two, or three surgeons so that all the department can perform this, uh, uh, this procedure. And this is one of my uh, publications that report a 10-year experience which shows that minimal invasive can uh, bring an increase of recruitment of uh, patient so it is an attraction for the department. And these are the uh, long-term uh, result for a mitral group of patient. Here we have enrolled 1,604 patient, 1,137 repaired their valve, most of them were degenerative lesion and 12% uh, uh, were functional uh, uh, reason to uh, pawn indication to surgery 
and uh, the other were either rheumatic endocarditis, uh, reduced surgery for malfunctioning prosthesis and various situations. And uh, if we look at the intention to repair group of patients, so it means patient who uh, received an informed concept for repairing the valve, the valve was repaired in mostly 95% of patients and this uh, throughout six different surgeons and not one or two single surgeons. So this is uh, a very high uh, quality outcome. Uh, these are the overall early results in terms of hospital mortality, which was 1.1%, the risk of stroke, 2%, uh, mm, renal failure, post-operative atrial fibrillation, bleeding, ventilation time, ICU stay, length of stay, and look how many patients were directly discharged home without being discharged or be, being transferred to a rehabilitation center. Uh, survival after repair was much better than after replacement. We have the follow-up at one, five, and 10 years. After 10 years, 90% of the patients were surviving, and out of them, 90% of the patient still had a well-functioning mitral valve. So uh, even the long-term results uh, with a minimal invasive approach were showing good uh, results. And if we see to all the surgical options in which we can adopt this uh, approach, we see that isolated mitral valve repair and replacement, AVR replacement plus ascending aorta replacement, combination of aortic valve replacement and mitral valve repair or replacement associated with a tricuspid disease. Uh, reduced surgery has an excellent outcome. Uh, AVR plus ascending aorta, root procedure like David or Bentals, myectomies even in hypertrophic obstructed cardiomyopathies, uh, congenital disease or removal of uh, uh, tumors and even the uh, arrhythmia can be treated with uh, uh, a minimal invasive approach. So looking to all these uh, uh, aspects that we covered, we can conclude that minimal invasive is a safe and reproducible procedure it guarantees a low mortality and low morbidity rate with excellent long-term results. Valve can be repaired with even a higher rate, uh, not only in simple, but even in complex diseases. And a standardization of the procedure with a good quality control are the key of success of starting a successful program. Thank you very much.